Hi, it's Rob Bryanton, and it's November 23rd, 2007, and this is my video blog entry. Uh, today I'm going to be reading from uh, something called E8 and the Semantic Web. And uh, just a reminder before we get going on that, if you want to read along with this uh, blog entry, uh, all of these blogs are posted at www.tenthdimension.com slash blog. But right now uh, I'm uh, hoping that you're watching this at tenthdimension.com slash chat, uh, which is a window that uh, allows people to post their comments uh, uh, to each other and that becomes part of the text that's scrolling in underneath uh, the video of me uh, uh, as I'm reading from uh, this stuff and chatting to people right now. Uh, if uh, it seems like I'm not responding to you, it's because chances are you're looking at a pre-recorded tape right now or, or a recording right now, and uh, we're going to uh, be doing some shows live again coming up, but uh, right now we're dealing just with pre-recorded shows. So uh, today uh, I want to talk about something that uh, has become... Uh, a new and very popular way of thinking. Uh, just in the last couple of weeks, I'm reading an awful lot more about it, and I thought it would be a good uh, chance to talk about how that relates to some of the ideas we've been talking about here. So the blog entry goes like this. Last blog, we imagined the Googleverse, ideas that have shapes and patterns across space-time, and how this is another way of describing the concept of memes. Some ideas seem to spring from nowhere, spread instantaneously, then eventually be overtaken by other ideas. The way of imagining reality that we've been playing with here says there, are, there is a universe of spimes, things that have a shape in space-time which is made of energy and matter, memes, ideas and patterns that have a shape in space-time, and life, the interference pattern that happens when memes and spimes interact. The imagining the tenth dimension meme, then, has survived and flourished not because it's, this, this, it's the scientifically approved theory of everything, but because it's a mind-expanding way of holding in your mind what most people would have thought is unimaginable, the underlying fabric of reality. Like other visualization tools, it has its strengths and weaknesses, but it's still a fun way of getting people started thinking about those really big picture ideas. As I've described it, the tenth dimension is equivalent to the unobserved fields of quantum mechanics, and the ninth dimension can contain the ways of beginning to organize those fields that can't be expressed as physical matter, the really big picture memes that express a preference for one way of organizing reality over another, but which are too broad or too contradictory to create a physical expression. This means that according to my way of visualizing reality, the eighth dimension would be the highest dimension for a reality to spring from. Now we have Garrett Lissy, who is creating a huge stir in the physics world with a new proposal for a theory of everything that uses E8, a complex eight-dimensional pattern with 248 points. I'm going to get Jason now to play you a YouTube animation demonstrating some of the rotations that can happen within an E8 construct. Now, as visually appealing as this animation is, its implications are startling. Lisi has demonstrated that there is a way to place the various forces and elementary particles, including their possible quantum spin values, on E8's 248 points. Rotating Lisi's model in various ways reveals the explanation for a variety of interactions, some of which, like the clustering of quarks into families of three, are natural outcomes from this structure. Some points in his model are currently occupied by particles which have been theorized but which, yet, but which yet have yet to be seen, and there's some hope that the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland may reveal some of those particles when it goes online next year. Whether this theory proves the existence of higher dimensions or not is open to interpretation. Lissy himself says this geometric pattern, although it's based upon an eight-dimensional construct, could be fully realized within our 4D space-time without requiring additional dimensions. In an article in this week's New Scientist magazine, string theorist Sabine Hossenfelder of the Perimeter Institute for Theoret Theoretical Physics points out that this could be complementary to string theory, which she says also uses E8 to describe the calabi yau manifold, the higher dimensional shape that string theory says our universe is derived from. As Einstein liked to say, our description of the universe should be as simple as possible, but no simpler. 
That's why the idea that our entire 4D universe can be defined from a geometric progression like the one seen in this video is so appealing. But whether our 4D universe is a lower dimensional shadow cast by higher dimensional patterns, or whether those higher dimensions are imaginary because we can't ever see them, may really be nothing more than two different ways of thinking about the same idea. Last blog, we also looked at the idea that there's an acceleration happening in our world, as ideas seem to spread faster and faster. Uh, faster, and faster. Tim Berners-Lee's Semantic Web Project is a great example of the tools that are arising now to help keep us all from being buried under a sea of rapidly rising and falling memes, which threaten to become an incomprehensible and overwhelming white noise. Perhaps E8 and the semantic web will become useful as ways to organize and rotate through the information of the world. As simple as E8 may be, I've been trying to visualize something even simpler here. Personally, I've long been a fan of the idea of helix shapes derived from stacked dodecahedrons and the implied six degrees of separation concept within that idea. I was surprised to learn from the article I'm referring to in New Scientist magazine then that Garrett Lisi has also been using G2 rotations, a hexagon-based system which is a subset of E8. Apparently G2 can be used, for instance, to describe the relationship between quarks, antiquarks, and gluons. If the semantic web eventually allows us to understand the Googleverse of ideas as just derived or as being derived from the interrelationship of just six things, will we have passed the threshold of, of simple as possible but not simpler? It's an interesting exercise. Try to come up with the six categories under which you should be able to put everything about your life and everything you know. If the semantic web could ultimately be used to connect together our knowledge into something as simple as that, we would really have reached a seemingly impossible goal. But even E8 as an overlay might be a useful tool in our desire to keep the accelerating meme space we are swimming through from becoming too much to fathom. Enjoy the journey, Rob Bryanton. So that's the end of the video blog, or the, the blog entry that, I'm, uh, that I was uh, going to be reading from today. But I just want to talk a little bit more about the semantic web. Uh, this is a concept that relates to some of the things that we've been playing with uh, here as far as the idea that uh, label clouds and tag clouds and uh, and uh, all of the information that people are collecting up together still needs a way to be able to interface with each other. Uh, you know, when I create my blog, I have a, a little label cloud at the head of it that shows all the different ideas that I've been exploring. And if you click on any one of those uh, words, then that connects you to the blog entries that I've created. But uh, for instance, if there were a way now to connect to every comment that has happened in the world about 10th dimension, we have that sort of right now with Google. But there's still a, a, a more of a need to be able to cr connect all those ideas together through, through uh, various logical connections. And that's what the semantic web project is all about. Uh, if you haven't heard of that one, just go to Wikipedia. There's a very nice article about there to get you started thinking about uh, how different ideas can be connected together and how we could, as we are experiencing this feeling of acceleration of more and more information coming towards us at a, an increasingly fast pace, that this might be one of the ways that uh, it all starts to fit together in a way that's a lot more comprehensible to us. Uh, and uh, of course that's one of the concepts that we've been talking about right from the beginning of the Imagine the Tenth Dimension concept. That if information equals reality, then all of the patterns that we're experiencing right now are just part of the basic information that underlies our reality down at the quantum level and uh, up to the very highest levels of uh, metaphysics and, and spirituality that uh, you can also apply to uh, this way of thinking about reality as well. Uh, I'm going to finish off uh, this entry. This is a fairly short one, but uh, there is a song I wanted to play for you. Uh, Ron Scott uh, has recorded seven of the songs that are also part of the 26 uh, songs uh, that are attached to this project. And uh, there's going to be a video that we're going to be seeing in a few days of him singing the song. But in the meantime, uh, just to get people uh, hearing these songs as quickly as possible through uh, YouTube and Rever, etc., uh, we've created these versions with just the text only. Uh, and there is something about just white text and a black background uh, 
displaying the lyrics to the song you're hearing that uh, that it does have a, its own charm its own uh, way of drawing you into the song so uh, this song is about those uh, ideas that might be floating out there all those different ways of uh, of connecting our reality together as energy and vibrations and patterns of information and uh, that there might be other ways that our senses uh, are actually uh, delivering that information to us that are just right out there at the very edges of uh, of our own awareness and that's why this song is called From the Corner of My Eye. This is Rob Bryanton. Thanks for watching. From the corner of my eye, I saw it. I thought I caught a glimpse at the edge of sight. Just a tiny inkling, very hard to see. I flutter like a thousand wings in flight. In the corner of my mind, I questioned. Well, how could there be more than this world of ours? Just a trick of vision, disorder of the mind A pattern of tiny twirling stars At the corner of my eye From the corner of my eye I saw the dance and spin Over the world within Such a mystery From the corner of my eye Hidden in the folds Those are the worlds untold Felt it. Oh, there's so many worlds that we cannot see. Just around the corner, hard for us to turn. Angels dancing endlessly at the corner of our eyes. From the corner of my eye, I saw the dance and spin over the world within. It's such a mystery.